Almost two full years ago, we made a video discussing how Intel lost the CPU race, as well as how they'll eventually lose Apple's business when Apple transitions to ARM, which would then be followed by other companies switching to ARM as well. And since that video was published, Apple has already transitioned to Apple Silicon with their M1 chip, and Intel has already begun to lose Apple's business. So a few months ago, we made an updated video discussing how Apple's M1 Mac put the last nail in Intel's coffin. And then two months ago, we made another video discussing how Intel is already beginning to lose the business of other companies with Nvidia and AMD switching to ARM chips. And today, this video will prove that x86 is dying sooner than you think, and you won't believe who is holding the weapon this time. To begin this story, we've got to go way back to an old Ars Technica article from way back in 2011 discussing the fate of of x86. According to John Stokes, it wouldn't take much for ARM to take out x86. He claimed that if it turns out that the ARM ecosystem can get within a factor of two of x86 in terms of performance and performance per watt, and if that ecosystem can keep the cost of ARM chips lower than that of x86, then ARM would essentially do to x86 what x86 did to all of the long forgotten architectures from back in the day. Apparently, Intel's x86 was able to take over by making products that were dramatically cheaper and almost as good. And that was enough to make x86 the most popular architecture for many years until today. As you all know, Apple's new M1 chip, which is the very first Apple Silicon Mac chip, is beating every other Intel x86 chip in terms of single core performance. And not only that, but the M1's performance per watt is absolutely mind blowing when you compare it to what Intel has to offer in both the consumer and workstation markets. Now going back to the article, he said that it's possible that competition in the ARM ecosystem could get performance up to Intel's territory without ever beating it, while being much cheaper due to massively higher product volumes. Well guess what? The M1 chip in Apple's low-end MacBooks is already outperforming the x86 Intel chips from even the highest end notebooks like the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And on top of that, it's also much cheaper for Apple to manufacture as well, since they're pushing mass production of the M1 chip to the max, with the same exact chip going into five of their products. And according to analysts, this switch alone will save Apple around 40 to 60% on CPU component costs, which is absolutely insane. But the mind blowing thing is that the M1 chip is also offering much better battery life. Like in one of our comparisons, where our 16 inch MacBook Pro was just about dead, while the M1 was still at around 67% battery life after three and a half hours of performance testing. And on top of that, we've recently been seeing many consumers including Windows PC fans migrating over to the Mac just because of how good the new M1 MacBook Air and other M1 Macs are. And the crazy thing is that Apple is just getting started because their M1X MacBook Pros are going to be launching within the next couple of months and I personally believe that those MacBooks will revolutionize the entire industry. So in reality, that article scenario for the death of x86 has already been reached today day. And according to Ars Technica, the x86 PC will become a boutique, high performance niche machine. And that basically means its curtains closed for Intel. Unless of course, they jump back on the ARM bandwagon. And at that point, if ARM vendors catch up, which Apple obviously already has, Intel would be left with two options. The first option would be to make its own mobiles, desktops, TVs, and other devices, which they obviously obviously haven't started doing. So that leaves them with the second option, go back into the ARM business, potentially even opening up their chip fabrications to produce ARM based SOCs from other companies. And based on what's been happening over the past couple of months, that's obviously where Intel is headed. So let me explain. A couple of months back,
back, Intel started an obviously desperate ad campaign going against Apple and their new M1 Max. And shortly after that, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger revealed plans for their new Intel Foundry Services business where they would manufacture Apple's and other companies' ARM-based chips for them, which is exactly what Ars Technica predicted way back in 2011. This action by Intel speaks louder than words because if their x86 chips were the future, they would have made plans to use those two brand new foundries to build their own x86 chips and make much more profit. But no, they're gonna build the very ARM-based chips that led to the demise of x86. Now, if you want more evidence of Intel eventually ditching x86, here you go. Earlier this month, it was rumored that Intel made a $2.1 billion offer to buy out Sci-5. And if you don't know who or what that is, you're about to have your mind blown. Sci-5 is a company established by researchers who invented the RISC-V instruction set architecture, and they are the world's first developer of commercial RISC-V chips. RISC-V is basically the open source version of ARM, so companies can make RISC-V chip designs without having to pay a licensing fee, like Apple, for example, who bought a generic ARM license many years ago in order to make their own Apple Silicon chip designs. And going back to Sci-5, around six years ago, they unveiled their new business model, which is to basically design RISC-V based chips for other companies like Intel. So you might be asking, why would Intel go and spend so much cash to buy this company if they can just design their own RISC-V chips without paying a licensing fee? Well, it turns out that Sci-5 has already been making their own high-performance chip designs for many years, like the U8 series chip to sell to other companies who want to use it. So if Intel buys out Sci-5, they'll basically be able to take whatever Sci-5 has made and rebrand it as a brand new Intel RISC-V based chip to compete against Apple's M1 and future Apple Silicon Mac chips. And guess what just happened a couple of weeks ago? Sci-5 had a massive press release where they revealed Intel's true plans. Apparently, Intel's new foundry services business, including Intel's two brand new foundries in Arizona, will be used to manufacture Sci-5's IP. On top of that, Intel is creating their own RISC-V development platform using its seven nanometer process technology called Horse Creek, which will combine several of Sci-5's brand new performance P550 cores and Intel's own DDR and PCIe IP technology. So yeah, Intel literally just entered the chat to battle Apple's M1 chip, and to be completely honest, it's the best move that they could have ever made. But check out this next part because it's by far the most telling detail. Back in March, Intel announced their next generation 7 nanometer chiplets for their Meteor Lake chips, which are gonna be their very first 7 nanometer x86 based chips that will reach volume production in 2023. However, Intel actually lied because their true plans were revealed in the Sci-5 press release. Apparently, the brand new Horse Creek RISC-V based silicon will be ready in 2022, which actually makes Horse Creek Intel's very first 7 nanometer product and it's not gonna be x86 based. This basically shows that Intel is doing everything they possibly can to rush out a RISC-V based chip as fast as possible, even putting it ahead of their own x86 chip designs. And if you're wondering why, you probably haven't seen our reviews of the M1 MacBook Air, or perhaps Dave 2 ds review, where he basically recommended the M1 Air over any other Windows laptop in its price range. So because of that, Intel absolutely needs to act fast and get a competing chip onto the market ASAP, or else they're gonna lose too much market share to Apple's M1 and M1X Max. But wait, it's not just Apple, because Nvidia's already announced that they're working with MediaTek to produce an ARM-based gaming laptop with RTX graphics to compete with Intel-based laptops. 
Not only that, but Microsoft has already announced that they're designing their own ARM-based chips for servers and Surface PCs, including laptops, to compete with Intel and Apple. And going even further, Samsung has already announced their new ARM-based Galaxy Book Go laptop for only $349, which uses Qualcomm's Snapdragon 7C Gen 2 chip. But wait, it gets even worse for Intel because just a couple of days ago, Qualcomm announced plans to compete with Intel and Apple Silicon chips by creating a brand new chip that's apparently supposed to be faster than Apple's M1 chip. And that's all because earlier this year, Qualcomm bought out Nuvia, which was founded by three former Apple chip designers to basically create custom CPU core designs like Apple is currently doing. And the reason Qualcomm bought them out was to reduce their reliance on ARM, which is being purchased by Nvidia. And apparently Qualcomm will already begin selling custom silicon Nuvia-based laptop chips in 2022. So what we're seeing here from all of these massive companies companies is a very direct and obvious reaction to Apple's M1 Max, with all of them desperately ditching x86 laptop chips as fast as they possibly can in an effort to compete with Apple Silicon as soon as next year. So based on all of that, it's now completely obvious why Intel themselves are ditching their very own x86 laptop chips and replacing them with Sci-5's RISC-V based laptop chips that will be launching in 2022. And now the only piece of the puzzle left unanswered is the fact that the ARM version of Windows currently sucks. But guess what Microsoft just announced last week? Windows 11 on ARM will now support ARM64 EC, which is basically a new ABI that runs with native speed and is interoperable. And to put it more simply, they're making it easier for developers to port their apps over to Windows 11 on ARM without having to recompile the entire app. So Microsoft is essentially creating a version of Apple's Rosetta 2, but for Windows 11. And on top of that, Microsoft has announced 64-bit versions of Office for Windows 11 on ARM, including all of their popular apps like Word and Excel. So if you thought that Windows 11 was disappointing, like how they kept the same old and clunky code base, that's because Microsoft's efforts were focused on ARM. And seeing as Microsoft themselves are planning to make their own ARM-based chips, it basically shows that they're also planning to ditch x86 in the future. So with all of that said, it's pretty obvious why all of these companies are racing to ditch x86 in order to compete with Apple's M1 Max. And the final nail in the coffin is the fact that Intel, the creators of x86, are ditching their own chips and using Sci-5's RISC-V based designs to compete with Apple and everybody else next year. So yeah, like the title of this video says, x86 will die sooner than you think. Now if you completely disagree with my thoughts on this topic, go ahead and leave your comments down below. But if you enjoyed this video, definitely click the circle button to subscribe, watch one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.